Hi, and welcome. I'm Don Ridenauer. I'm a licensed mental health counselor in Indiana. And today's video is going to be about going to the grocery store without fear. Now, if that seems odd to you, you just don't experience this, but I've been hearing from clients and friends and even family members that they hate going to the grocery store and some people just can't go or they get there and they're so overcome with anxiety that they have to leave. And when I say afraid, it's the total panic attack or close to a panic attack where their heart's racing, their palms are sweaty, they're sweaty all over, they feel like something horrible is gonna happen, they have chest pain, um, they're shaking, um, all those symptoms that go with an anxiety attack and they just cannot stand it. For some people, they never get there because as soon as they think about going, they start developing all those terribly anxious symptoms and they just can't do it. So I want to talk about how you can overcome that and be able to go where you want to go when you want to go there. Because I mean, after all, Going to the grocery store is pretty basic and you ought to be able to live your life, right? So let's work on it a little bit. So uh, let's think about what people tell me uh, when I begin to ask them really specific questions about their anxiety. So a lot of people are afraid of other people. They have what's typically labeled social anxiety. They don't like to be around other people. They don't like to talk to people, at least not strangers and definitely not in crowded large areas. So there is that. Other people or the same people complain about there just being too much sensory input. It's loud, there are lots of lights, there's so many products to choose from that they get hung up on looking at all the options and they just get overwhelmed. Some people, of course, are really afraid of the large spaces. They don't like all that room. Everything that goes with it, really, they don't like the checkout lines because of the people, because of the big spaces, because of just standing there waiting and not knowing what might happen next. Uh, other people uh, have trouble with the checkouts. They feel like there's so much pressure to get their cart unloaded, to pass everything through to make a grumpy cashier happy, think they're being judged constantly. And there, there are many more. And so I'll put in the comments some of the reasons if you're one of those people, one of these folks we're talking about right now, um, put something in the comments. Tell, tell me what you actually are afraid of when you think about being at the grocery store. So right now we're going to stay focused on just being in the grocery store, buying groceries for the family for the week. And so what we're going to do is work on some techniques that will help you overcome any anxiety. But in particular, we're going to uh, work in the, the setting of the grocery store. First, I want to reassure you of something. You're not defective. You are not wrong. You are not crazy. You don't even know where this anxiety comes from most of the time. We've named a bunch of fears, but oftentimes people don't even know why. It's just the very thoughts of it create such panic in them that they can't think rationally and they're not even sure where that comes from. So you're not crazy. You're not defective. You weren't born wrong. It's not bad genetics. Somewhere along the line, you've learned to be what we usually refer to as hypervigilant. And that just means you're paying incredible attention to every detail around you out of fear. The fear that if you that something bad's gonna happen and if you don't pay attention and you're not watching constantly over your shoulder and behind you and all around you, that something is going to overwhelm you. And where does that come from? Well, it can come from a lot of places. It can come from childhood trauma. 
It can come from a traumatic event in some similar kind of area or place. It doesn't have to be trauma, but a lot of times it is. And it doesn't have to be the kind of trauma that we think about of, of severe abuse, uh, sexual abuse, um, in a car wreck or an, a victim of a violent crime. It doesn't have to be that kind. It can be the daily emotional impact of being told you're wrong, that your feelings are wrong, that your reactions are wrong, that uh, people, typically your parents, were never satisfied with what you did. You were never good enough and you were never acceptable to them. And you tried like crazy, you wanted your parents to love you and take care of you, and you tried like crazy to please them and you could not figure it out. You became angry or withdrawn or both. Uh, and over time you became fearful as well of being judged. I recently had a client who was afraid of going to the grocery store and I worked through these techniques with her. And so she went to the grocery store, did fine. She was got through, got everything they needed for the week. She was standing in kind of a long line at the checkout and there was a lady behind her who was really loud and really judgmental, making comments about everyone and everything going on. Uh, all rude comments. And so my client gets up to the cashier and she was going to use an EBT card. So in other words, food stamps. And the woman started going on, well, why don't you just get a job? Why do you have to make all of us taxpayers pay for your groceries? And here is my client trying to get over this terrible phobia and her worst fears are coming true. She's standing there at the cashiers, uh, trying to get her groceries processed, trying to get paid for it. Uh, being embarrassed by this loud lady who's criticizing everything she's doing and everything about her, even though the lady knows nothing about her. She didn't know her husband was working three jobs. She didn't know they had five kids. She didn't know that they just couldn't make ends meet. And they were doing the very best they knew how to do. And the food stamps were helping them survive. She didn't know any of that, didn't care about any of that, was just judgmental with her own stereotypical thinking. And so my client gets really upset and finally goes, you better shut up. I'm about to go off on you with some profanity thrown in, which she was very embarrassed about later. And everybody around was stunned. There was quiet. She finished checking out, took her groceries and left. And when she came in to see me and was relating all this to me, she says, now I can't go back there. And I said, really, why is that? And she says, oh, everybody's gonna be judging me. I'm gonna be so embarrassed. I said, you have got to be kidding me. You are a hero in that store. Everybody who was in line hated that lady. And you stood up to her and stood up for yourself and you're gonna be the hero of all those people, but especially the cashier, who was probably dying laughing inside, maybe outside, but she didn't tell me that. And so she has been able to go to the grocery store ever since. So these techniques do work and, and she's not the only one, I've worked with others. That was just the most dramatic overcoming I have heard about of succeeding at going to the grocery store. So how did we get there? Well. The first place is creating a place of calmness, warmth, and safety inside your mind, your safe place, if you will. And how do you do that? Well, first, this is a recorded video, so I have no clue where you are or what you're doing right now. If you're uh, watching this on your mobile while you're actually walking or God forbid you're watching it and driving um, or if you're in a nice comfortable safe place. So what I would like you to do is to get to a safe place, a place where you are comfortable, where you can sit, even lie on the floor if you want to, but sit on the couch in a chair 
um, and be comfortable. And what I'd like you to do is just start out with a nice, easy breath. Don't strain. Just another nice, easy breath. And notice that right away there's a feeling that goes with that breath of calming. Now, that's a little bit tricky. Many people who have a lot of anxiety first feel anxiety. And that just shows that you're becoming aware, more aware of what's going on right now. And that's a good thing. So just go ahead and take a breath. Knowledge you're anxious if you're anxious. It's okay. You've been anxious before. You can do this. And then what I'd like you to begin to do is think of a place you love, a place you just it's the perfect place for you to be, either from a memory or a fantasy, but where you are warm and safe and loved. See it. See what's going on around you. If there are other people, hear what they're saying, who they are, what they're wearing what colors are going on. Is it in nature? Is it in a special place in the house? If it's in nature, is it in the woods? Is it on the beach? At a lake? Picnic area? Whatever's special to you. Feel it. Feel the air on your face. Feel your body sitting where you are. Smell it. Do you smell grass? Do you smell flowers? Do you smell ocean? What do you smell? What do you feel? Feel that air. Maybe it's wind. Maybe you hear the trees rustling, waves crashing, or just the pleasant quietness. Maybe some birds in the background. You know. I don't know. I know my place, but you know yours. Nobody can hurt you there. Be safe there. Feel that warmth, that safety that calmness. Very good. Let that build. When you have it firmly and clearly in mind, just give it a name. Call it vacation. Call it beach. Call it woods. Just give it a name. It's important to have a name associated with that experience. So now I want you to refocus, be right back here, live, in person, uh, breathing normally, feeling normally, and reflect on that for a minute. How was that? And leave some comments for me about what that was like for you. And if you didn't get a really well-developed feeling of calmness, that's okay, don't worry about it. It'll come, take some practice. This is a learning process. And so allow yourself to just be you and do whatever you're able to do at this time. And you could build on it each time. So how do we do that? Well, first thing is say that word, call it. What's that name? Was it Woods? Think Woods. Take a nice breath. Be back there, wherever that place is for you. Be there. Can say the name. Beach. Whatever.
whatever your name for it is. And relax. Feel the calmness. Very good. Now, while you're enjoying that place, I want to say some things about grocery stores. Now, if your anxiety level started to climb immediately, that's okay. Acknowledge it. Take a nice full breath again. Say that word, that key word. Be there. And so a whole different part of your mind is going to think about grocery stores for just a minute. And th think about, it's just people. It's just a place. It's just a place with lots and lots of stuff to eat, use. And you only need some of them. And I want you to think about what it's like to be in a herd. And so if zebras feeding in the grasslands and he's in the herd and he senses some other members of the herd are nervous, are twitching. What's he do? He focuses, he pays attention. But he looks around and they relax, go back to eating. He knows it's okay. There's no danger. We can do that. So if we're in a grocery store and you walk in and you look around and you pause and you breathe and you see how everybody is. What's the state of the herd in the grocery store? Are they panicked? Are they running? Are they just going about shopping? This is a time when you can decide whether to be hyper vigilant or not. You look around, nobody's running. There's no panic, there's no yelling. Maybe loud talking, mostly murmuring. And you know it's okay. Because if there was danger, they would not be there. Another nice, easy breath. Stay in your safe place. So you know that if you go into the grocery store and you're going up and down the aisles, and everything seems fine. But if an alarm goes off or people suddenly start yelling and running, you will too. Almost never happens. It's rare, very rare. And so you go in and you begin to take your cart and go look for the things you need from your list. And you take nice, easy breaths and you focus on your list. When you go through the produce, yeah, there's a ton of produce, all different kinds of produce. But you only need bananas. That's all that's on your list. So you don't have to look at all that. You just look at bananas. You see them, you go get them. Move on. If you need some lettuce, look for lettuce. And you just get what you need and you ignore the rest. And then you start down the other aisle. We need some baked beans. Do you care what brand? 
because there are 14 gazillion kinds of baked beans. Barbecue baked beans, plain baked beans, garlic, honey, chive, and rosemary baked beans. There's every kind of baked bean. And there's cheap, and there's expensive, and there's in between. But you don't need all that. You just need some green, uh, some baked beans. You just want regular, ordinary beans. Maybe you want store brand. Maybe you want Del Monte. So you just let your attention go to that and get what you want. Look at your list, move on to the next thing. It's not overwhelming because you're paying attention. You're focusing only on what's important. Nice, easy breath. Stay in that zone. Anytime you come out of the zone as we're practicing this, just take a breath, say the word, and let yourself sink into it deeply. Very good. So that's when you're in the store, but let's back up and go home. You're back there in your home. You're relaxed, you're in your safe place. Nice, easy breath. So, Let's practice. You're going to go to the grocery store. Don't want to, wish you didn't have to, but you do. So you're going to get your list, get your purse, get your wallet, get your keys, jacket, raincoat, whatever you need. And you get everything. And you take a nice, easy breath. And you go to the door. And before you open the door and step out, nice, easy breath. Say the word. And go to your safe place inside. And isn't it interesting how you can stay in that safe place, be in the woods or at the beach, in some part of your mind while you open the door and step out of your, the house and go to your car. And you can get in your car and you can start it up and put your seat belt on and adjust the mirrors and whatever you do, it's automatic. You've done it so many times. And then you can pull out, drive to the store, find a parking place, Take just a minute to close your eyes, say the word, remind yourself, I can do this, I can do this. And you're going to feel a little anxiety, and you're going to wait till that subsides. Then you're going to open the car door and get out and start walking towards the door. You can just walk right in and go on about your business. Or if you need to, you can stop right outside the door, gather yourself, say the word, step inside, do that again, get a cart, sanitize it if you want, and start in looking for the first thing. You can continue. Now, just like when you're asleep and someone calls your name and you wake up, the part of your mind that hears all the background noises will alert you if there's ever any reason to be afraid. So you can trust that. It absolutely will not fail you. And so you can just go at your pace. Nobody else's pace matters to you, your pace. They go their pace, 
you go yours. Up and down the aisles, just focused on what you're doing. Very good. And you get the bread, you get the vegetables, you get whatever you need that's on your list. And maybe a few extras you've happened to notice that you forgot to put on the list. And then you go up to the checkout. And maybe you have to wait. That's okay. Waiting's a good time to be back in your safe place and tune out the store. You'll notice when it's your turn. And then you just move up in the line. And you just start unloading your cart when the time's right. You don't have to rush. You're not in anybody's way. Everybody knows each person gets a turn. And you're just as important as anyone else. You take the time you need to unload your cart and let the cashier do it. Or if you're using the self-checkout, you just scan each item, put it in the bag or on the bagging area to bag in a minute. And before long, you're paying for it, your cart's loaded, you're heading out the door, and whew, you made it. Congratulations. Way to go. Of course, now you got to take them all home and put them away, right? That's no fun, but you still have to do it. But you accomplished your mission in your head. And it's the same process when you actually go to the store. Now, a couple tips about this as you refocus on me right now and refocus on the room. Just know that you have to practice this. It's a skill that you can learn. It's a skill that you can develop. And once you begin to do that, you can put it into practice. You could do it today. Because you can do that. You have it within you to be calm, to overcome anxiety, and to go to the grocery store. And isn't that a success? Isn't that a triumph for you? So enjoy it and celebrate it. Okay, so whatever questions you have about this, comments, remarks, put them in the comments and I will answer as many people as I can. And thank you for being with me. And please, if you got some value out of this, just give me a thumbs up and share the video. Uh, subscribe. I will be coming out with more videos from time to time. And uh, hit the notification so that you get an alert when it comes out. But hey, you know what to do. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Appreciate you and your efforts.